You know, if this game ends so fast, I might just consider playing like Metal Gear, uh, not Metal Gear, Metal Slugs 2 and 3. Well, streaming it, I mean. Oh, shit! Oh, he's about to crash, and I somehow died? Maybe You're very was... talented. Oh, hi, Dusk. Hello. Ah, damn it. So, what you doing? Metal slug. Metal slog. Uh, it's a it's an old arcade game. Right yeah, now. I noticed. Uh, looks like you're getting tanked. You know, I should have seen that coming. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> ah, damn it. The leftover explosion killed me. They do that. Yeah, it'd be like that. Rocket launcher. I'm not going to be here for long, but I saw you were sitting around, so. Nah. I get that. Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Oh, got him. Surprised it's not a Wilhelm scream. Oh, there's like God knows how many other familiar screams. I do recognize that, uh, that scream. Uh, it's from Bop It. <laughs> Ow! And that was way too loud on my end. I just heard myself peek. God damn it, I lost the Metal Slug. Yeah, you recognize that sound? Thank you. Heavy machine gun. Heavy machine gun. Heavy machine gun. Oh! I was right in front of that camera. Uh, not camera, cannon. I cannot word. I cannot Well, English. it points and shoots. Yes, it oh, points and shoots. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, how are you? Ah, I'm good, how are you? Oh, oh, oh. It's a doll. Alright. Oh, more prisoners. Did he make a doll out of his shorts? No, he just unveiled it. Oh, damn it. No, other way. God damn it. That took a lot out of me. <clears throat> yeah, I knew that was coming. Metal Slug 2, the third mission was somewhat hard. I'm gonna take that with a grain of salt. Mission complete. Yep. Mission five. Start. Hey, Aeon, since you're here, what kind of war do you think this is? World War II or Vietnam? Um, when did this game come out? It came out in 96. Okay, so in 96, if you saw imagery like this... Yeah, like, that looks like a... I would argue that, like, the imagery in here is, like... Like, sort of a parody satire of, like, Vietnam. If, if anything... Yeah. But like, the architecture is wrong. Sorry, what? The architecture yeah. is wrong for Vietnam. Yeah, but it's not meant to. It's not like meant to be Vietnam. It's, it's just a like you, you can tell. Like, it's not just a comedic thing. It's also like the iconography of like what the weapons look like and what the soldier looks like are like Vietnam era oh, depictions. Damn it. The curve down. Should have seen right, so, yeah. like, for instance, the style of shotgun, the idea that the hero is a dude wearing a <laughs> sleeveless vest and a bandana, that's that screams, <laughs> like, there is no other war that has that as a visual motif. 
<laughs> That's fair. Um, however, the weird thing is that the main thing that would have been dominating the world at this time, as far as wars, especially '96, would have been the Cold War. No. No. The Cold War was over at this point. Yeah, I I'm think aware. the Cold War ended in. Uh, yeah, '91. '91. Mm -hmm. Um, however, the thing is. In 96, the war imagery that people would have been mostly familiar with, including the news, would have been uh, the Bosnian genocide imagery. So what you would have seen would have been like a lot of like 1990s East Europe uh, with like blood in the streets and everything. Yeah. But it very much was Soviet. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but but like... Shit. Yeah. But like, um, there is... Like, me and my friends all remember, like, war games, documentaries, and shows where, like, our earliest depictions of what a war zone looks it. like is 1990s Bosnia. Yeah, that's fair. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. I argue that that's true for most people in the audience. If they were American and were interested in the military, they probably just didn't know it at all. Ah, damn it. Well, yeah, thank you. Like, and that's just a theory on my part. I can't verify it. It's just a hunch. How how dare you not be able to verify everything? I cannot cite in source. Terrible. God damn it! This is why you didn't university. Ah, there we go. Now here comes that <laughs> missile. <laughs> Hang on, let me see if I can get on the truck. <laughs> Shit. <coughs> I know I'm supposed to be doing something here. Gotcha! Eat lead, motherfuckers! I do apologize that the game is very, very loud to a lot of you. You're good. Oh, get off of me! Get off me! Son of a bitch. Damn it. Bunch of dogs are running. running from I also just realized that, like, prior to Call of Duty 4, which popularized Fuck. the mid what the Middle Eastern military setting, mm -hmm. you did see that. Well, that's when it became popular in video games. I should say it became popular in media in the late '90s when most like war imagery, because war imagery in pop culture always shifts to whatever the last war was, usually. Right. You know that's true. Um, yeah. So, yeah, in the late 90s, it was Persia. Whoa! And it just kept bleeding on into Iraq and then Afghanistan and, you know, all that other stuff. Yeah. So, like, that's why if you, like, play a lot of, again, shooters from the era, OGs will remember, uh, Call of Duty was at first a World War II shooter, then it went into a modern one where you're in Whoa. the Middle East. Oh. It, it's kind of a fusion of, like, what we essentially got in the 90s, which really has the theaters that we see now are just amplified from that. In actuality, it's just yeah. I remember later. that because there, there's oh no, I forgot the name. What um, am I doing? That's why I like this. No, good, there, good. There's a game that everyone play played at that point. It was like deploying flashbang. Was the meme from it? Call of Duty. That was Call of Duty. Yeah. Okay, so it was that one that I was thinking of, <laughs> like you're going through this maze and trying to shoot like or like disarm the bomb from the terrorists. Yeah, exactly. And it has a fusion yeah. of sort of that East European theater, but it also has that mid Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern, yeah. Oh, the writer yeah. has a point. In the 90s, we had the Gulf War. 
No, yeah, I, but it ended. Yeah, okay, so if you didn't know, um, Persia is the Gulf War. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... The full name of it is the Persian Gulf War. Alright. And then Persia died and Iran was born. Fuck! Mm -hmm. um, um, was it? Yeah, as it turns out, uh, the way to beat uh, a three thousand year old strategy is just invent GPS. Thank you, Persian Gulf War. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. Oh, was and it then Eddie Lamar, who created that, or was she Wi-Fi? I don't know because GPS originally was a GPS was originally just a military invention. Yeah, I know, but I remember Hedy Lamar did something. Hunt you on a second. Damn. Look it up because I'm not sure. And it Lamar. Lamar. Shit. Invented. Here we go. It's like the first question. Hold on. Yeah, she created Wi Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Lamar shared her concept for using frequency hopping with the US Navy and co developed a patent with Antiel in 1941. With who? Antio, I guess it was a company. Uh, yeah, I couldn't tell if it was a name of someone or not. I'm like, that sounds that sounds like the most Russian ass name I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was um, American. Yeah, well, I know that because we were the first we were the first only ones with radar at one point. Yeah, exactly. Well, more than the soldier. Well, not that. Sorry, uh, misspoke. Uh, with GPS, because, like I said, initially it was just a military invention, and then later the military was like, okay, yeah, we can open this to the public. And then later Europe, because they were worried about over-dependency on the U.S., and they still hilariously are, they were like, oh, we're finally going to do something for ourselves. What is it? Oh, we invented Galileo, so we have our own GPS, and, and so we don't need the American system all the time. Like, wow, what a great way to stake your independence from us, Europe. Mm-hmm. I only, like, I know about her because she was one of those ones that I was, like, surprised to learn that she was more than an actress. Because, like, I knew her as, like, an actress, and then, like, I learned, oh, no, she, like, invented this thing. And she's like, ooh, that is very cool. It's kind of like how people forget that Reagan was an actor because him becoming president, like, completely usurped. It. Yeah, it, like, completely usurped the idea that, oh, he's an actor, isn't that ridiculous? Now it's, like... Oh, the president was an actor? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Apparently there's a movie in the works about him now, starring Dennis Quaid. He's interesting. interesting. I like, he's one of the more... I wonder what like, I don't have a full opinion on him, on Reagan yet, The but what I do know is um, he's one of the more divisive presidents where it's kind of one of... He's one of those figures where it kind of... Your opinion of him says more about you than him, usually, because everyone yeah, kind of has a unique opinion of him. It's kind of like... For Brits, it's Margaret Thatcher. Everyone seems yeah. to have a unique opinion of her that says more about you than her, usually. That is true. Ah, damn it! Ah, oh, damn it. I wasn't fast enough. Holy shit! Oh my god. <clears throat> Somehow I won't get that guy. There we go. This reminds me of a couple sections in Black Ops where you're on the, um... Gun, the uh, mobile gun platform. It's essentially a pontoon with a shitload of guns on it. Uh-huh. Uh, no, but like driving one of those things in in that game was like nuts. That was a fun that was a fun mission. I was kinda liked it because I just I love that game just for its desire to fuck with you. Hmm. Cause that's also I think if I remember right, that was also one of those missions where it was like like the, it's unclear if the event itself actually happened because no one from the event is either around or if they are around, they never speak of it. So you get these like really surreal moments when playing that game uh, where it's just like, 
you're being offered. Or what is it? You're like in a moment that, like, even as you're like playing it, like the intro sequence is like blocked out by black ink, and again, like no one wants to talk about it. Yeah. Everyone might deny it later because you can't say, "Oh, it's that mission where we found, you know, the China Lakes and that crashed airplane." It's like, Woods, do you have any idea how many times we've done that? Yeah. It's almost too weird. Like everybody knows what you're talking about, and yet they're kind of right, and you can't explain what you mean. I've had that happen to me before. I know that's as weird as it sounds. I don't think it sounds that weird. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's like a surreal moment. Yeah. Are you serious? Or, well, I mean, yeah. there are lots of surreal moments in, in life, sort of. There are, but can I mention something about this one that I've noticed as a weird yet interesting rule? Yeah. If I find myself in one of those moments again, and I'm aware that it's, like, in the moment, that this is one of those situations where I'm like, hey, this is going to be one of those moments that no one's going to remember later. I'm, I'm in that place. I'm yeah. here. Capital H here. Whatever here is. But I'm in the, the place where it's going to be forgotten later. If I ask people when I'm in that place about a previous time I was there, that is the one and only time people will remember. I'm not sure I understand. I, like I said, this is the part that makes it difficult. It's just a weird little mystery that I found. Fair. But, like, if I'm in one of those situations where it's like, oh, no one will remember this moment later, it's like a surreal moment. If I'm in... I... If I feel like I'm lucidly in one of those and I ask people about, like, a previous moment... Yeah. It's like the only time they seem to remember it. But then like, later, they'll forget about it and the other moment, too. Like, what sort of moment are you talking about? I can't describe any, because, like I said earlier, the nature of these is that nothing I can describe will narrow it down, and they're so surreal that I can't put it in time, either. Okay. But, yeah, like I said, sorry, it got weird. Yeah, you're good. I, I'm not 100% sure what I'm, uh, what you're talking about, but... I'm also not in the frame of mind to understand anything right now. That's fine, I can get quite deep. Yes, you do. Ah! Why was the vest a thing for the hero to wear? Not sure. Um, it's because in the jungles of Vietnam it was motherfucking hot. Yeah. Um, so, like, to give you an idea about how hot it could get, this would be, like, 120 degrees with full 100% humidity. If you... Oh. Do you really want to be wearing sleeves? Yeah, fair. Okay. But then why would you wear a vest on top of it? Unless that's supposed to be, like, the bulletproof vest or something. The vest is for... It, the idea of the vest, like, you can't... They would never be able to show it at this low res. But, yeah, the idea would be... Hey, Blissy, like, awesome. the vest has your equipment and, like, your stuff. Oh, it's those combat vests that, like, my... Yeah that you see people wear. Yeah, like, if this is Vietnam, so there would not have been armor, but it would have carried, like, ammo, equipment, and, like, other things. Fuck! It just wouldn't have protected you from anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting my We're talking ass about kicked. Vietnam and happy stuff, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> what is this game? Metal Slug. You remember that episode of TF2 with the heavy machine gun sound effect? The voice? Yeah. That's where this came from. Heavy machine ah. gun. Yeah. <clears throat> That's funny. Nice. That was not that long of a game. Wait, it's over? Yeah, I just finished the last mission. <laughs> oh, oh, I come in on the last... <laughs> well, okay. hold on, hold on. Hey, chat, I've got Metal Slugs 2 and 3. You want me to play those too? <clears throat> oh, dear. It's up to you. All right. I see. Heck yes, yes. Play them. All of them. Might as well. Lol. <laughs> wow, that was quick. Especially three. Love three. All right. Might as well play as well. Play them. I, I, I can't grab her that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bizarre. Well, right now, I'm taking a quick little break and uh, letting the credits roll. I'm going to use the chat. bathroom. Hello, chat. I'm going to take a bathroom. Be right back. No! Um, 
I'll have to take a look. I think it's only Metal Slugs 2 and 3. So I just finished watching Matilda. Oh. Have you oh, the old one? The, the movie. Nice. I like that one. It's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, the one with the Danny DeVito? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Now and, I have a uh, craving for from chocolate how... cake. Oh. You have a craving for oh, chocolate no cake. I have a craving for chocolate cake. <laughs> well, I have a chocolate Obviously bar, that scene so that's was supposed to do getting. the opposite. <laughs> what were you saying, Dusk? Uh... Yeah, the one who played Trunchable, who's also in uh, How to, uh, who's also in Call the Midwife. Yeah, I know. It, it don't when you told me that, I'm like, no way, not on. Then I then I looked closer. I'm like, oh, no. We should watch that again. Yeah, this is a movie that I started watching uh, recently. That I don't know if I would consider a guilty pleasure, but I remember watching it from my childhood called The Little Rascals. No, I, oh, yeah, I remember that. that. I watched it's like it. An age movie. Yeah, it, it wasn't my thing. I think it's just because the the protagonists were just too young for me to click. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I love kid adventure type, friendship type movies. Like The Goodies is a classic, obviously, yeah. but or The Sandlot. Uh. Your lies a buttload of golden slimes. <laughs> Peace forever!